How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. Happy Sunday, everybody. A lot of wrestling to talk about. It's the Olympics. The Olympics have started. Everyone's in Paris. Everybody in the world of sports media, sports business. If you're trying to get some sort of deal done, I think you want to be in Paris right now. Uh, a lot of a lot of interesting stuff going on here. Ring of Honor on Friday. I had a fun. That was a fun show. I enjoyed watching it. Those shows are always great. Dynamite, Rampage, Collision, SmackDown. We had a lot of good wrestling this week. Also, SummerSlam next Saturday. What a fantastic on paper card this is. Really, uh, if you look at this, compared to previous years when they put on these shows, uh, I think as of as of today, there's only one match that's not a title match, which is odd. You don't see that too often from them. We're, obviously, we're going to talk about that. We're going to run down that card next week when we do the show. We're going to be talking about what happened on the, on that card. Uh, really good stuff. Also, uh, Dynamite. I loved a lot of stuff from Dynamite. I did. I did not like one specific thing on that show. SmackDown told the story of going to this uh, pay per view. It was a pre recorded show because everybody was in Japan on the WWE side. But we have a lot to talk about, including the news and the latest on the WBD media rights for AEW and a timeline possibly on when this could be announced. That is the big question here. When is that going to be announced? Quite possibly soon. That's my guess. All this and a whole lot more on today's show. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Let's go into some of the news this week. Obviously, the big story here in the world of professional wrestling is TV rights. We, start, we have started to see the commercials. Actually, during the Olympics, I don't know if you guys have seen this. During the Olympics on NBC, they have commercials for SmackDown going to USA, which was very interesting to see. And a lot of the, they were showing a lot of, you know, Olympians that have been in WWE. Good timing for that internal marketing for them. Uh, we have that happening. Obviously, WWE is going to Netflix also. That's a big move. But... One of the most important ones that we don't have an answer about is what's happening with WBD and AEW. Tony, a couple of weeks ago, stated that they were in the red zone. Are they in the... Now, MG, you're, you're a football guy. The red zone, that's like the 20. That's the 20-yard line, yep. That's a 20-yard line. All right, that's pretty close. Maybe they're close. Maybe they're in the 10. I got to be that by now, man. They got to be. <laughs> Well, here, here's the here's this thing. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was told that Tony would be going to France to meet with David Zaslov. I don't, he obviously was not in France on Saturday <laughs> or Friday. So it's quite possible he's going this week to see if they could finalize the seal. It is very important to have this, you know, close to finish by now, especially with the Olympics happening and the who's who in sports business it being in Paris right now. I think it's important. That's why David Zaslov is there. Is he a huge Olympics fan? I don't know. Is he a fan of conducting business? Yeah, he is. <laughs> I could verify that. Uh, but another part of this, which is interesting, the NBA rights has always played a part in this. And Amazon won the rights. I mean, did you see that chart of what they're paying, what NBC is paying, what Amazon is paying? I didn't see it. Astronomical. I know, I, I, billions. I know it's out there. And billions yeah. of dollars a year for the NBA. Well, WBD in zero hour uh, matched Amazon's offer. So what does that mean? That means they are not getting it because the NBA rejected the offer from WBD. And now this is going to the courts. So there's going to be lawsuits. Uh, Turner still has the rights for one more year. So yeah, I'm curious say. how this is going to work. 
This is going to be a very interesting time for them. Uh, Charles Barkley was very uh, angry about a lot of this. He was ranting and raving on social media. Well, it's, that show is so good. The Inside the NBA oh, it's show. Oh, so good. So good. It's, it's been 20 years or whatever it's been on, and now yeah. it's jeopardy of going away because, yeah. because of this. So, yeah, so it's a interesting time, but I, you know, how does this affect AEW? I don't think it affects them in a negative way. Um, you know, if they were going to give the NBA a ton of money, uh, I would say, yeah, financially, if they were not intending on getting them and then they changed their minds, yeah, maybe it will play a part. But as of today, it's the same that I've heard for months. The deal is close to being done. There's a few hangups that they're working through, but it's expected that everything is going to be resolved. And we've already seen a little preview on the international version of, of Max where AEW is on there with their archives. A lot of moving parts here. We'll see what happens in the coming weeks. But I do, I do believe they're out of the... They are out of the... Um, the well, the, the, Tony the, said on the ROH call that they, were, they weren't yet. Oh, out know, of... That was just him. Oh, out of the exclusivity? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if that was him just... I don't um, know. I A couple, you know, Dave and I had heard the same time frame. So that, and which, you know, Dave and I don't speak to the same people. Sometimes you do. But I this I could guarantee you it wasn't the same person. So very interesting to see. Mm -hmm. WWE Raw and NXT Great American Bash to air on Sci-Fi for the next two weeks because of the Olympics. We all know why. Um, They only told us like every... <laughs> 10 minutes i know every i mean they, they, this is the you know sometimes wwe does a terrible job at keeping people informed this is not one of those <laughs> they're they just, they're making sure everybody knows <laughs> like you know how many people had no idea there was a battle of the belts yeah i didn't <laughs> i i'm i will tell you a lot of people didn't and that's a problem that is a big problem we'll talk about that when we get closer to that because i my my phone was filled with people DMing me and saying, I had no idea there was a show. And I watched AEW every week. So I don't know where the miss was. I, I don't know what happened there. This is fascinating. Nick Khan, Triple H, and the mayor of London met for a potential, of, for the possibility, the potential of hosting WrestleMania there. Why did they give him the tiniest little belt? <laughs> Hunter didn't want to put a good one in his in his carry on the big one. He didn't want to check in his luggage. Um, you know, we we've seen their their shift to international business over the last year or so. Half the pay per views are now out of the country. You know, currently we only have the 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 A shows right, and I'm using hand quotes for the people listening on radio. That the A shows are currently. In the States, but everything else is being moved around. Not to say they're not going to be in the States, but as of right now, you know, that's how they're doing it. And it's working for them. And they're selling out these venues. Japan, very highly successful weekend in Japan for them. So how would a WrestleMania in London work? They would where would they do it? Would they do it in Wembley? They would have to. That or Cardiff. Mm, I don't that, think they're going right. to. No, they're not going to go. No, to Cardiff, no, I, I don't either. I'm just saying that would be the other alternative. No, not at Cardiff. It's just not an inter. You know, it's not the international yeah. hub that London is. Absolutely. Yeah. So it would do great over there, and we would get it on in the afternoon, which mm. would be a dream for me. A two o'clock and a one o'clock <laughs> in the afternoon WrestleMania. Oh man, <laughs> nothing better than that for me. Give me a great afternoon where I sit down on my couch, I have a couple drinks, and I sit down and I watch WrestleMania in the afternoon. I'm not forcing myself to stay up past 1130. I would be worried about the weather. That would be my only concern. They would have to go more into May maybe to maybe. do it. But, you know. does, that, does that roof close? I don't know. I don't think so. I could well, be We wrong. could find that. We could look that up. We could find that out. Uh, I think it's, it would be interesting. I'd love to see that. If they did something like that over there. Why not? Why does it matter anymore? It really doesn't matter. A lot of these hangups that that company had in the Vince era don't really matter. Language loosened up. Venues are, have loosened up. They're running different markets. I don't think Talent's they would have gone to, to Berlin. 
I don't think they would have gone yeah. to Berlin the way they did. They did. I don't think they would have gone to France the way they did. I don't think they would have done those international shows the way they did. Obviously, the Saudi thing has opened things up because that's a big commitment for them to travel uh, and put on a big show. But if people are looking to pay them, if the municipalities are looking to pay them, why wouldn't you do it? That That's a great business decision. Curious to see where it goes. Kenny Omega had surgery. I'm assuming this was his hernia surgery. Yes. That man has been in pain for a very, very long time. Um, it, it's interesting how... You know, we got to see the very best professional wrestler quite possibly in existence, 2017, 2018, 2016. We got to see the greatest of the great perform and put on, uh, I mean, just that. I, I can't even articulate in words what a talent he is. And he has been hit by one thing or the other the last couple of years. I'm hoping that he gets healthy. I'm hoping that he could, you know, just do one more of those. That's all I want. <laughs> and the other side, Moxie's taking some time off. Well deserved. Yeah. That man has been Renee the backbone of that company. Yeah, Renee actually took a week off last week. If you notice, she wasn't on a couple weeks yeah. ago. So it looks like there was some family time. That's good for yeah, them. Yeah, good for them. Listen, it is a... I, I'll, I'll tell you a story after the break. Last night, we had one of our, uh, one of our friends here former professional wrestler and he was just laying in on everybody and you know what even the lightest stuff hurts a little bit wrestling observer live here on sports byline we'll be back right after this wrestling observer live here on sports byline i was saying before the break last night i had a um a little get together at my house and a couple couple wrestlers showed up <laughs> local guys here in new york nobody 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 anybody really uh no and you know a couple couple bottles of crown royal <laughs> emptied wine bottles emptied and all of a sudden you know the chops start happening and people are doing lockups <laughs> they're doing they're doing a whole thing it was uh it was a fantastic time big shout out to all those guys that were here yesterday nick all this on smackdown informed the bloodline that because tangaloa is not cleared they would have to forfeit their spot in the gauntlet number one contender match. Solo brings in Jacob Fatu to take his place. Yo, Jacob Fatu. I mean, what Pretty an impressive much the story of SmackDown Friday. His <laughs> he, it's all him. This is okay. It, yeah. This man has said no words, right? Barely, nothing. A couple of grunts and a couple of yells. He does not need to speak. I acknowledge you. I acknowledge you. That was okay. It. <laughs> he doesn't need to do a thing. He is so menacing. He's a menace to that to that company. Uh, Jacob Fatu comes in to take his place, that and uh, and they are entering back in. LA Knight defeated Santos Escobar after the match. Logan Paul attacked Knight until Knight fought back. Uh, <clears throat> and he was stomping on Paul repeatedly. Paul was in the crowd. He was sitting in the crowd backstage. Logan Paul tells By Byron Saxton that he has a surprise coming for SummerSlam in Cleveland. What is that surprise? I have no idea. Will he have someone in his corner? I have no idea. My producer's back here. We lost him for a second. LA, uh, Logan Paul's surprise for LA Knight. What do you think it is? At SummerSlam. Hmm. I don't know. It's going to be something to do with Cleveland. I don't something know to do with Cleveland. Uh, oh, Drew Carey could come out with him. <laughs> <laughs> why not not my first choice but okay <laughs> okay he's a hall of famer is he from cleveland or was he only yeah, from cleveland yeah. in that show okay he is from cleveland okay mm -hmm. i'm going with drew carey hall of famer wwe hall of famer <laughs> drew carey <laughs> that is the most insane sentence to say <laughs> i don't know we'll see what he has okay. yeah <laughs> uh jay cargill and Bianca Belair, promo interrupted by Al um, Alba Fire and Dawn. The baby faces got the best on the heels in the end. Jade is so impressive. I, 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 I like this team, and I like that, that when they split them, it's going to mean something. Uh, and it'll be a huge help for both of them. Bloodline, Jacob Fatu and Tamatanga. I love the Tamatanga yell that he does. 
he does that weird like screech that, like he's yapping yeah, 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 yeah. that one yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> fantastic i i'm so glad he does that i don't know what it is but i again menacing menacing tamatanga defeated baron corbin and apollo cruz the street profits pretty deadly the oc legato del fantasmo to become the number one contenders for the WWE Tag Team titles. 38 minutes this match on SmackDown. This was a long match. We're starting to see this happen in wrestling again, huh? Long TV yeah. matches. 38-40 on SmackDown. I, I'm for it. I like these slow and steady matches. You, you don't was... need to do too much. But again, I'm old. Yeah, and of course it was five matches in one, right? So. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's a gauntlet. So, fun. Great. Interesting, though, because this is a good team. And where was Tangaloa? Uh, Storyline, he was there. He just uh, he had a patch over his eye. So, I don't know if that was legit or if it was part of the storyline. Yeah, something. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Cody comes out to the ring and says that he thought he was done with the bloodline at WrestleMania. This new bloodline has taken out all of his friends. And he will have to do whatever it takes to beat Solo Sokoa. Cody in Japan, somebody gave him the, the Dusty outfit. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. That was actually... The robe and the hat? 1979, yeah. He wore it in, when he wrestled in Japan. And someone had it and just said, hey, you want this? <laughs> Which That's is incredible. Cool. That's incredible. That really is. Uh, very. He's having the time of his life. It's tremendous. This guy left that company in 2016. They made him Stardust, whatever, 2015. When did he leave? 2015, 2016, whatever it was. 2015, I believe, was yeah. when. when and yeah. he just went and did the indies. He, had, he really wasn't. He was only going to do it for a little bit. His goal was to go and act. You know, there's different variables here. There's one that he never leaves WWE, and he just stays there. And he is, I don't know where at that point. Or two, he just goes and does a couple indies and gets a CW show, gets on a show, and that's it. He <laughs> doesn't wrestle anymore. And we miss out on all this. Fascinating. Nia Jax and Tiffany Stratton defeated Bailey and Mitchin, 1244. Everybody's intertwined here, which is nice. After the match, they, they show, uh, they cut to a Bloodline video. Solo says that the Tongans will be the tag will will bring the tag team titles back to the bloodline. And Sokoa will bring back the world title. So was Jacob Fatu just a temporary? That's what I the person that wrote this might have in uh interpreted it that way, because I got this from the Observer website. Yeah. That's uh, how I but, see it too. Yeah, uh, it maybe that was it. We'll see. Um, mm, yeah, we'll see what happens. Who here. knows? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then after the match, uh, they showed the video, and it also said uh, Sokoa said if Roman had a problem with that, he knows where to find him. So they are telling you a story. That was here. a big hint. That was a big hint that t stay tuned next Saturday because I would be shocked if we didn't it, see Roman. It would have to be the time. It would have to be the time uh, to create whatever you're building to. And mm -hmm. I'm telling you, Survivor Series, that War Games match should be Bloodline Civil War. It would be so good if they could You know, because you got to think about it, right? Like, when you do those matches, and we saw them do Blood and Guts, which is essentially the same thing, right? Let's uh, call it what it is. When you have a story between two groups of individuals, right? Two teams, two groups that are so intertwined, it makes it matter so much more. Those NXT War Games matches meant something because everybody had something going. I thought the Blood and Guts match was great. I, I enjoyed it. Was it the best one they've done? No. Was the finish a little anticlimactic? I got what they were trying to do. It probably didn't execute as well, but whatever. It was still a fun match. But my biggest problem was it seemed like it was too much of like just ragtag group of people. You just slapped them on one side. One side made sense. The other side, it was just everybody got involved for whatever reason. I like it when it's two 
opposing sides. I also don't like that they call them Team AEW. The elite yeah, is, I mean, weird. it's weird. It's weird because you're not, you're not telling me that these guys are taking over the company. You know, they're outsiders. They're, they are the establishment. They are AEW, and so is everybody else. We'll talk about that in the next segment when we go into AEW. But this looks great. Uh, they're setting up for SummerSlam. I said on paper this looks to be a, a fantastic SummerSlam. We'll go through the card a little bit here. Let me find the card here. I just lost my card here. There we go. No, we don't. There it is. Big story here. Probably the big match for everybody. CM Punk versus Drew McIntyre with Seth Rollins as the champion. If they don't do... Referee. A, a, as a, yes, special guest referee. Sorry. <laughs> if they don't do a Shawn Mikey's Undertaker and Bret Hart moment. Punk's Drew, Drew or Punk, one of them. Let's say Drew spits on Rollins. Rollins goes for the chair, misses. Waffle CM Punk. Or you could do the opposite. Seth costs Drew the match. Punk wins. They all hate each other. Man, that's tremendous. And you know what? CM Punk's a Bret Hart guy. Seth Rollins, obviously influenced by Shawn Michaels. Drew McIntyre, big guy. Just put some eyeliner on him. He'll be the Undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> He'll do the hair flip and everything. You know, I, I, you don't get these opportunities too often when you have this high caliber. Look at this card. Sami Zayn, Braun Breaker, IC title. Logan Paul, LA Knight, United States title. Bailey, Nia Jax, Women's Championship. Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley, a huge match here, which tremendous intrigue. Women's World Championship. That, that could be the main event. Damian Priest, Gunther. Another uh, two tremendous wrestlers, and Solo, Soko, Sokoa, and Cody. I, you know, on paper, this is a great pay-per-view. Will every match execute the way that we want it to? No, may, probably not. I would look at this and say two of the weaker ones for me are Bailey and Nia Jax and Cody and Solo. Yep. But the story of Cody Agreed. and Solo is not the match. It's where's Roman? So you added a, you've added a high level of interest in there. Damien Priest, Gunther, you know, I think we're just going to get a great match there. Lynn Morgan, Rhea Ripley, very interested in there. Logan Paul, LA Knight. The story LA Knight needs amazing. to win the title. The story is tremendous. Mm. Braun Breaker, is it his time to get a title? Do you make him the IC champion? I say yes. That dude is going a billion miles an hour. You got to appreciate that. And, of course, CM Punk drew McIntyre with Seth on the, as a special guest referee. What a great card for next week. What a, a tremendous card. You, got, you can't look at this and say, meh. I'm sorry, you can't. I know people want to. But this is, this is a very high-level pay-per-view. Now, again, will it execute? I don't know. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. You know, my producer, MG... Reminded me how bad last year's card was compared to this year's. Because he was there. We sent them there. We sent them to SummerSlam. Just for comparison, I want to I read this card, okay? There were nine matches. Logan Paul defeated Ricochet. Fine, that was a fun match. They, you know, great. Might have uh, been the Cody, best match. Yeah, Cody defeated Brock Lesnar. LA Knight won by uh, the 25-man Slim Jim Battle Royal. Throw, uh, d d eliminating Sheamus. Shayna Baszler defeated Ronda Rousey in an MMA rules match. Gunther defeated Which Drew McIntyre for the IC title. Seth Rollins defeated Finn Balor for the world title. Bianca defeated Asuka and Charlotte by pinfall for the women's title. Io Sky defeated Bianca Belair by pinfall, women's title. And Roman That's Reigns defeated Jey Uso. Tribal Combat. For the undisputed WWE uh, Universal Championship and recognized as the tribal chief of the Anoa family. Not a great show. Again, no, on, paper, yeah. on paper, was... I could tell you mm -hmm. that this is a much better show. Mm -hmm. Let's go into AEW here. Do you have Dynamite on here? I wanted to touch on Dynamite a little bit. 
I just have some oh, of the highlights. Okay, cold, okay. cold thoughts on that. Thank you for that. You know what? I, I appreciate your notes today. Uh, the Blood and Guts match, obviously, a big story here. What did you think of it? Mm, um, I liked it until the, the ending didn't make much sense to me. I felt like they were fumbling around looking for something they couldn't find. Yeah. Maybe they were maybe they had a blowtorch ready or something and Darby couldn't find it. But it know. felt like they were yeah, just and oh, okay, I'll give up. I'm like, yeah. come on. Just, yeah, it, it, it was a little anticlimactic. Yeah. The ending was weird, but at the match the match did a lot of good stuff. It also it told you multiple stories. One, obviously, oh, yeah. Swerve Strickland, uh Swerve and and Hangman is a again. huge story here again, right? And and by design, it, it's kind of taking it away from Danielson, where Danielson really doesn't care to become world champion. And this man is losing his mind to get that title back and to, to destroy Swerve. The other thing that they teased, which I really liked, was Okada and Hangman. Yes. They teased it multiple times. I thought that was really interesting, too. And, man, that's a match I want to see at All In. That would be a great match. We also got the debut of Camille as Mercedes uh, Muscle. We finally got Camille. And Tony Storm is preparing to die. <laughs> I don't know if you know that. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That, yeah. I I loved that segment yeah. with her, and now she's playing a different character. Her character's changed again. Yeah. It's just so good. So we also doing. got on Rampage on Friday night, and this was a big story. There was a the there was a bizarre, rumble. Actually. There was a Royal Rampage to challenge for the AW World Title at Grand Slam. Darby Allen won that Battle Royal on Friday's taping on the tape on the taped episode on Friday. Uh, he's earned a shot at Grand Slam, Arthur Ashe Stadium in Queens, New York. I'll be there on the 25th. So so that man wrestled, what, 45 minutes in a cage match with all that blood and then, and then went out an there. hour later and <laughs> did that. And, and, and won a rumble. Yep. <laughs> yep. Insane. Uh, okay. But who's the champion? Yeah. And the question is, so he's got... So he's facing for the TNT championship at all in. Yeah. And then you're turning around a month later or a few weeks later and you're going to go in for the world title too. But who's the it's world just, champion? It's convoluted. Yeah. It's is convoluted it Danielson? Right Good question. Yeah. Is it Dan? I don't know. We'll see. Our wish death before this on our highlights here. Friday night, they had a pay-per-view. They were out of the eSports arena in Arlington. That building, you know, they got a lot of those uh, little production issues out of the way on Collision compared to last week. I saw, I've, I've seen a couple, but yeah, for the most part, it's better. They got better. The audio was better for, for, for the most part. Uh, they, they, they fixed the lighting, some of the lighting issues. You know, it takes time. You're in a, you're in, it's a different setup. ROH Tag Team Championship, Mike Bennett and Matt Taven defeated Ishii and Kyle O'Reilly. Layla Hirsch defeated Diamante in a Texas death match. Lee Moriarty defeated was... Wheeler Yuta to win the ROH Pure Championship. Interesting move. All right. Red Velvet defeated B Billy Starks to win the ROH Women's TV Championship. I didn't see that coming. Yeah, that's... That, so Billy Starks never defended it. She just held yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, she just held it. She just defended it and lost it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it plays into the end, too. Yeah. Uh, ROH six-man tag team title eliminator. This was cool to see. Dustin Rhodes and the Von Erich boys, Ross, Ross, <laughs> Ross Von Erich and Marshall Von Erich, defeated Alex Reynolds, John Silver, and Evil Uno to become six-man champions. Dustin Rhodes holding another championship. So no, that was the eliminator. On I'm sorry, the Death eliminator. I'm so sorry. I'm so Battle sorry. I belts. jumped. Oh, man, I gave you a spoiler here. I my notes <laughs> skipped, and I saw it again. I read the lo wrong line. Sorry. Ignore that whole thing. I'm going to talk about it in a couple seconds here. ROH TV champion championship. Atlantis Jr. defeated Leo Rush, Shane Taylor, Johnny TV, Brian Cage, Lee Johnson in the survival of the fittest match. 
elimination match, uh, ROH Women's World Champion Athena. I like this. Defeated Queen Aminata. This was a very good match. And you got Mark Briscoe oh, defeating Roderick Strong. Queen Aminata, for me, stood out in this match. Yeah, big time. She looks like she can be a star. Yeah. Yeah, big time. They've done, it's a lot of improvement. AW Collision last night. Same building. We also have Battle of the Belts that followed this. I'm going to go right into that, too. Orange Cassidy defeated Johnny TV. A recap of the Patriarchy defeating Bullet Club Gold to win the vacated trios title. So the trio titles are split again. They yeah, split these he, titles. I thought they weren't going to do, but yeah. here we are. Here we are. Blackpool Combat Club, Wheel of Utah, Claudio Castagnoli defeated Top Flight. Brian Cage and Lee Moriarty. Uh, cool. The conglomeration was backstage. Willow Nightingale, Orange Cassidy enter the frame. Willow hyped everyone was, before the match. Willow's so good. Willow's great. This this promo was was everything. This is my highlight of a Collision. What Willow. Read. Yeah. Oh, 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 the no, Mark, Mark Briscoe, Briscoe promo. Yeah. Oh. oh, my. You know, I, I he's always been a good promo guy. I mean, there's a reason why he stands out. Somebody that was here yesterday was uh, has known Mark for a very, very long time. And we were talking about this on what a... What a tremendous talent him and his brother were as an act together. And a lot of people were concerned, you know, what is Mark going to do? And we're seeing what he's going to do and we're seeing what he's capable of. And he is a tremendous, tremendous professional wrestler in every way. What a great promo, huh? Yeah. So he held, he tells... <laughs> He tells Kyle to hold his baby, and he gives him the champ title. And Kyle O'Reilly starts bouncing the title like it is a baby. <laughs> <laughs> and then he brings out his actual baby. He says, we got a new member of the conglomeration. <laughs> and it's his name. It's his newborn that's named Jay after his brother. So good. So that was pretty cool. So good. Mm. Uh, <laughs> let's see. And then what else do we have? Oh, we had Hologram defeating the Beast Mortos. This Mortos. was tremendous. Okay, this was tremendous, but there was a weird spot here, okay? Mm. Where the ref kind of got confused. So he went for, it was some sort of power bomb on Hologram, right? And mm. Hologram was flat on, and Mortos lifted his legs in like almost like a cross. And it seemed like the ref thought that he was going for a submission, and he just stood there and didn't oh, do anything. Yeah. Okay. And it got weird, but I'm I'm liking this presentation for Hologram. Where they go with this, I don't know. Because I've heard of some of these ideas that they've had for him, but we'll see. Thunder Rosa defeated Maya World. Lance Archer beats up everybody backstage before his match against Will Ospreay on Dynamite. So that's what, I, that's what Lance Storm does now on the show. He just beats people up in the back. Conglomeration, Kyle O'Reilly, Mark Briscoe, and Tomohiro Ishii defeated the premier athletes, Arya Davari, Josh Woods, and Tony Nese with Mark Sterling. Lance Archer defeated a nameless victim. <laughs> <laughs> so they're setting up a match with Will Ospreay on Wednesday. For yeah. Him. So he actually is going to wrestle. Yeah, and it's he gonna is going to be a wrestle. good match. <laughs> FTR, Cash Wheeler, and Dax Harwood. They were thick boys, huh? Oh, yeah. They're they're thick guys now, and they're wearing the black. They, I mean, they're they they, they were big, big. Uh, defeated my favorites, Mansoor and Mason Madden. FDR what a great These guys look good. No, so I, good. I, I, Mansoor and Mason are fantastic. They are they are great self promoters. Love it. Love to see it. And and I'm glad that they're in Ring of Honor. I'm glad that they were on Collision. The acclaim were backstage after Blood and Guts on Wednesday. They cut a, seri a serious, intense promo on both the Bucks, FTR, and all the doubters uh, who thought they shouldn't be in blood and guts. Okay, cool. You're giving them a little bit more edge. And Pac defeated Leo Rush. This went right into Battle of the Belts. I'm going to be quick here with this. AW World title eliminator match. Tony Storm defeated Taya Valkyrie. After the match, Storm took the mic and said that this... Uh, can I say that on the radio? <laughs> I don't know. She, 
She got a little. She got a little saucy referring to herself. We'll just say that. Well, yeah, yeah. It was, she's very... still gonna be. She's still gonna be the champion. <laughs> this trollop is still the champ. <laughs> Storm said that Mariah May was perfect for her and was better Tony Storm than actually Tony was. She said that may may have made a mistake, but that was not cutting Storm's head off when she had a chance. <laughs> CMLL. World Women's Title Eliminator Match. Willow Nightingale defeated Deanna Peraza. ROH World Six-Man Title Match. Dustin Rhodes and the Von Erichs, Marshall and Ross, with Kevin Von Erich, defeated the Undisputed Kingdom. The Von Erichs are once again six-man world champions with Dustin Rhodes. You know, what's old is new. Fantastic stuff. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. This was all really, really good stuff here. We got a break, but when we come back, I'll run down the all-in card. Also, on Dynamite on Wednesday, Brian Danielson will speak. Maybe he'll care. I'm telling you, reverse Montreal. Throw the title on him and turn the lights <laughs> off and get the hell out of that building. Put that title on him. Tony, put the title on him. CMLL World's t Women. <laughs> CMLL Women's Title Eliminator. Willow Nightingale versus Chris Statlander. We're finally getting that match. And, Mer and Mercedes Monet and Camille make an appearance and a whole lot more going into all in in a few weeks here. A lot of fun stuff. When we come back from break for our final segment, we're going to go into the all in card that's shaping up here. They've added a couple more matches in the last week. More to be announced. We'll talk about it. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Final segment of the show. Guys, do me a favor. Follow me on X at Andrew Zarian. I also do a number of shows here on Wrestling Observer. This is including we're live pal on Tuesdays. I also do a show Beyond the Bell on Tuesdays with Rich Stambolian. And also Matt Men Podcast on Fridays with Rich Stambolian. If you follow me on Twitter, you can find where all of this is. All in so far for the card. They did an angle on the San Diego Comic-Con AW panel. Setting up Britt Baker and Mercedes Monet. All right. That's the match people wanted. Now they're getting it. I hope it's a home run. You'll, you're also going to have AW World Champion Swerve Strickland defend against Brian Danielson, which may be Brian's last attempt that he is forcefully put into to win that world title. <laughs> this will be the last time that man is forced to have to be the greatest professional wrestler alive and to challenge for one of the biggest prizes in the business. God, I hope he gets it. I hope they are swerving us. And I hope I say, ha, I knew it. AW Women's World Champion Tony Storm is going to defend against Mariah May. AW American Champion. Not... <laughs> international American champion MJF defends against Will Ospreay it's going to be a banger TNT championship Jack Perry defends against Darby Allen the consequences of that blood and guts match and like I said TBS champion Mercedes Monet defends against Britt Baker Satamura is retiring did you see this we got about yes, 10 seconds here very mm. cool She's one of the final people that wrestled on w in WCW that is currently wrestling. There's only a handful of those. Wild to see. Next week when we come back, obviously we're going to be talking about SummerSlam Fallout. Everything that happened there. Everything that happened on Dynamite. Everything that happened on Collision. All in. All out. Whatever is going on in professional wrestling. Until next time. Take care. Bye-bye.